Okay. First of all, Ricky, thank you very much for your uh, unwavering belief in architecture, uh, which <laughs> has been uh, uh, proved over uh, several sessions of, uh, of uh, uh, the Urban Age uh, conference. Um, I am not sure whether we deserve such a, such a um, trust, uh, architects, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, the, when Ricky uh, told me uh, quite a few months ago, uh, called me and said, well, do you know anything about uh, electric city? I'm doing a conference on, on electric city. I, I thought that I uh, could only uh, say that I have been part of an experiment that uh, uh, I did a couple of years ago in Princeton as a, as a commission from the former <coughs> dean who asked me to get engaged in a program uh, that was done through different uh, uh, schools in the US uh, uh, called Culture Now, which was aimed to see what was the, the um, how do I move the slides forward? Okay, uh, so uh, uh, I was a part of this uh, Culture Now experiment, which was aimed to assess what, in what way architecture can contribute to American culture. And thinking about that, I, I thought that probably the most important phenomenon that happened in American culture in the last uh, decades is uh, the emergence of uh, the Web 2.0, which is a, a space that <coughs> uh, uh, changes. It was a very uh, challenging uh, question because I think it's a, it's a, a space that uh, now everybody uses, not only in America, but else, uh, also elsewhere. It's a, a space that uh, has pervaded uh, political engagement, uh, uh, has uh, now uh, embodied a, a very important part of uh, uh, political uh, forces. Uh, it's a space that um <coughs> is fundamentally challenging the very principles of uh, architecture. So if architecture, and, and, and I have to say that for me, the interesting question about being engaged in this experiment was almost to see would, what could be the, the future, um, if you want style, what would be the traits of an architecture that is made within this realm. So this is the previous, uh, the, the previous uh, paradigm. Uh, which you all know is uh, based on large buildings, uh, 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 pliant uh, forms, uh, custom-made elements, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what, is, what happens with architecture when, uh, if, if architecture is the vehicle that tries to communicate, to represent things in, in physical uh, forms, what happens when, when uh, when things are now have an IP address and communicate with each other, uh, what has been called the Internet of uh, Things, uh, when sensors, I mean, we've seen uh, already several examples of, uh, of this uh, world in the uh, conference, sensors are communicating with actuators and controlling uh, the environment. Uh, what happens uh, when urban space, which was uh, one of the primary means for a uh, collective to come together uh, to share space uh, is now replaced by other vehicles uh, that uh, uh, also help us to, to share uh, content, to share intelligence. Uh, I mean, is, uh, and how do these uh, things merge? Um, uh, what happens when uh, uh, knowledge is uh, crowdsourced, when editors are uh, no longer there and, and we are basically uh, driven by uh, this uh, media. Uh, I mean, this is a, a media that, that has produced also very interesting uh, uh, examples of uh, sharing, which was one of the, uh, I think, one of the main uh, purposes of uh, urbanism or, or architecture, uh, sharing cars, sharing uh, apartments or rooms, sharing intelligence, um, uh, even sharing a, a, a financial uh, endeavor uh, through uh, micro uh, financing or, or this kind of uh, crowdsource uh, uh, finance. 
uh, it was also, it, it is also, a, a, I think, a, a milieu that is uh, starting to uh, challenge the, the uh, previous uh, um, processes of uh, uh, authorship and uh, patronage, uh, which are now being replaced again by uh, crowdsource uh, intelligence. Uh, uh, so it was actually a very interesting question. How do we turn this uh, world into something that has uh, a, physical, uh, a, a physical effect? And, and my intuition uh, two years ago was, was the time when uh, there were a number of uh, programs uh, or, or, sorry, engines uh, appearing on the Web 2.0 uh, like Foursquare or Google Latitude, which uh, uh, after having globalized uh, content uh, were starting to focus on location and were starting to uh, uh, provide uh, cities would be now designed for people carrying one of these uh, uh, devices uh, that give you a, a different impression of the of the city so uh, uh, the the uh, hypothesis here was that this sudden turn from a worldwide web to a localized uh, interface between information and physical uh, objects uh, was uh, maybe uh, op an, an opportunity to, to, to explore that uh, basically drove the, the experiment. Uh, it was an experiment that I did uh, uh, with uh, students. Uh, we, we applied a number of uh, uh, theories of ad actor network uh, 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 diagrams uh, trying to understand who are the agents that are engaged in each one of these engines. Uh, and we uh, did uh, uh, quite a few interesting uh, uh, proposals that, uh, for example, had to do with uh, identifying and resolving food deserts in, in America and uh, proposing vehicles whereby uh, Web 2.0 devices could uh, pair up with uh, physical infrastructures that would uh, for example, optimize uh, food wastage. wastage in, in, uh, we collaborated with, uh, with different uh, uh, companies, literally. We were talking to uh, Walmart and we were talking to uh, uh, a number of uh, engines like, uh, like uh, Vimeo and uh, <coughs> uh, Indaba. Uh, so we literally were working with some of these Web 2.0 engines uh, in making uh, this was another project which was about uh, re regenerating Detroit uh, using uh, using some uh, uh, a website which is in Dava which is uh, a music uh, shared uh, uh, website and using the, the kind of musical tradition of uh, Detroit in order to uh, produce certain uh, elements uh, to be distributed in the in the urban fabric to regenerate certain areas of, uh, of Detroit. So in terms of uh, creating new urban institutions, the, the uh, experiment was very interesting, very successful. We identified a number of, uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, interesting new uh, potentials where I think the experiment was less, um, less effective, was in actually bringing this to a, to a close in terms of physical uh, uh, output. Uh, it was, uh, there were projects that uh, where you could I identify already a number of, if you call, traits. Uh, and and I, I would like to uh, go back to this uh, uh, first intention of the project, which was to identify, uh, let's say, the new style that will emerge out of the interface between physical uh, objects in the city and these uh, new uh, technologies. Uh, uh, and that new style was not very promising in what uh, we got out of our engagement with uh, these uh, Web 2.0 engines. Uh, many of the projects were temporary, uh, were uh, 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 scaffolding-based, uh, uh, so it was maybe interesting as a, as a project, but maybe not uh, forthcoming in terms of producing a new um, architectural paradigm like the Guggenheim perhaps did uh, at some 
at some point. And so uh, what I would like to, uh, but, but out of the experiment, uh, mm, I managed to get uh, a few ideas which I would like to share and to put on the table uh, almost as a kind of polemical statement of what could be uh, the, the architecture that, uh, that uh, may emerge from uh, the engagement with these, uh, with these processes and these uh, uh, technologies. Um, and uh, I would like to, to say that uh, a number of these uh, uh, processes uh, uh, have to do with, I mean, the, the I bring this image because it's uh, the first, the first phone is a phone that is made out of the assemblage of uh, devices to listen, to speak to, uh, uh, every one of the elements is uh, visible in the, in the object, it's a, it's a discrete object, it's very different, for example, from the Guggenheim and the kind of parametric uh, uh, continuous pliant form that we have seen emerging in, in, in the last uh, few uh, uh, decades. And, and so that, for that type of phone is now this. Uh, we've we've uh, gone through a, through a phase in which uh, uh, technology has become virtually uh, uh, totally integrated in, in, in certain uh, forms, in certain uh, uh, geometries. Uh, but the, the proposal that I would like to make is that uh, perhaps that continuity, that uh, style of uh, continuous uh, variation may actually be changing, that the new paradigm of, uh, uh, or the new canon of uh, architecture uh, probably will be uh, discretized, will be again an assemblage rather than, uh, than this uh, kind of uh, uh, seamless continuity of the previous uh, models. And there are a number of, uh, of uh, reasons uh, for that. Uh, this uh, milieu, this uh, Web 2.0, now enables us uh, uh, more than ever to customize, uh, to customize products, uh, uh, um, to uh, crowdsource intelligence that enables people, literally, to become makers, to become producers is another very important uh, lineage that, that is emerging where people are actually able to uh, acquire intelligence and apply it in producing objects that look like this. This is a self-made track uh, uh, that uh, uh, one guy called Andy in the, in the States put together out of crowdsourcing intelligence and, uh, and uh, pieces uh, from different uh, places. Uh, uh, customization of, uh, of uh, products, uh, IKEA Disobedience, a, a recent show um, at uh, MoMA from Andres Hake was exploring uh, this uh, type of um, uh, uh, almost devolution of the design agents to uh, a, a wider uh, base of, uh, uh, actually to the users, the evolution uh, of the design agency to the uh, to the user. So these uh, uh, processes of crowdsourcing and customization, I think, are crucial in, in, in terms of uh, uh, perhaps producing a new architectural uh, paradigm, a new architectural uh, canon. Uh, and I believe, and, and this is where, in a way, the, the manifesto or the statement uh, comes forward, is a canon that rather than being uh, um, uh, highly uh, technological is going to be more uh, driven by uh, low technologies and the uh, skilled uh, production. You may know that this is uh, what this is, it's a lock uh, uh, cam bolt, uh, something that IKEA uses in order to enable an everybody to assemble uh, furniture. This is another example of uh, uh, the architecture that is emerging from these uh, processes, the wiki house uh, where, where you, you see also a, a system of elements that can be assembled uh, in order to produce a variety of uh, uh, um, objects that are part of a series uh, and yet <coughs> uh, 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 not designed by, uh, uh, affected by the, by the system itself but not designed by a, by a single uh, mind uh, and have this, this kind of combinatorial 
nature. Uh, this is another example of uh, uh, things that are uh, happening, and, and I, I believe that uh, uh, some of these uh, processes have to do with the formation of a new uh, paradigm, uh, HHF uh, Art Farm, uh, a project that actually uses industrial uh, off-the-shelf uh, products in order to uh, assemble uh, architecture. Uh, contain the container, the unit of contained space, is suddenly uh, a very widespread uh, uh, paradigm that uh, all kinds of uh, architects are using in order to produce uh, uh, physical uh, objects uh, in the in the city. Uh, it has become. I mean, these are these are some of the examples that I found. This one around the corner from here, in which suddenly this uh, container, off-the-shelf container, is suddenly assembled and is used to produce uh, the new urban uh, facilities that, that have to do with, um, uh, that are accessed through, through the web, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, discretization, I think, is one of the, of the or discrete variation versus the, the smooth continuity of the, of the parametric. Uh, I think that what one could perhaps identify as a current tendency that is enabled uh, and supported by some of these uh, 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 engagements with uh, Web 2.0 is experiments that have to do with units, containers in, uh, in the case before, in this case, bricks, but units that are not, uh, not uh, customized, that are all the same, but in whose, uh, where the project is in the, in the assemblage between of these uh, units, some examples from uh, Gramazio and, and Kohler, and, and uh, also some, um, other examples of uh, established architects who are actually learning from uh, these uh, processes and, and uh, trying to capture uh, the images uh, that emerge out of this um, uh, this uh, new brave world of the of the web 2.0 and the customized pro production. The idea of the unfinished is something that is also uh, uh, present in this devolution of the design agency uh, to the user, uh, Alejandro Aravena. Uh, is uh, one example uh, that you all probably uh, know, uh, uh, Giancarlo Massanti, uh, another uh, 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 architect that is exploring this idea of some sort of combinatorial uh, uh, um, uh, assemblage of, um, of uh, open systems that uh, are finally decided in time by the, uh, by the user. Uh, uh, obviously the Torre de la Concordia, uh, Urban Think Tank. It's very interesting how many of these experiments are done by architects in, in Latin America. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, uh, thinking about what Enrique was, uh, was saying before about non-planning, al almost how the, the, the uh, political and economical uh, uh, infrastructure in those countries are, is in some ways uh, uh, producing um, uh, a certain capacity to engage with this type of, uh, of uh, systems. The, the, I think the, if there is one model that uh, everybody is talking about now, probably is the slum, a very uh, ad hoc, uh, and, and also talking about some of the things that Richard um, uh, was uh, mentioning and, and writing uh, 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 recently, uh, had to do with uh, perhaps this emerging as some sort of latent paradigm that everybody is suddenly be becoming uh, interested in. Other paradigms that have to do with uh, this world is the pop-up show where uh, actually uh, 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 containers in the city like the one that we are inhabiting now uh, are suddenly activated. This idea of urban recycling is uh, another, uh, uh, I think, uh, strand in the, in the developments that emerge out of this world of the pop-up shop of the, of the city that uh, is made uh, for a certain uh, moment in a certain space of the city uh, trying to uh, recycle some of the existing infrastructures. And uh, I mean, of course, uh, I think Tate Modern is uh, perhaps uh, one of the local uh, examples of, uh, of this and maybe a, 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 a very um, advanced one because it was uh, done uh, a long time uh, ago uh, and uh, it 
it uh, uh, obviously has had enormous impact in uh, how the how the city um, uh, uh, can be reused, can be transformed. It's the city is almost like a carcass that is inhabited, that is uh, that is used by these other uh, processes that are that are. Uh, pervading. I, I, I remember always uh, Jack Herzog talking, uh, talking about this city as dealing with a mountain. And I think that perhaps uh, some of these uh, processes are uh, operating with existing urban topographies almost as if they were mountains and the architecture is some sort of uh, inhabitation of, uh, of them. So this is basically uh, some of the, 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 the trends that, that I identify as perhaps the emergence of a new paradigm enabled by, by these uh, new technologies that I would like to uh, propose uh, today for the discussion. Thank you very much. So maybe before we move on, I'll just ask you a, a, a question or two. I, um, I think it was interesting that you began by looking for a style, yeah. as if architecture was sort of existing in some abstract world in which it moves from style to style. I, I, implicit in that is, of course, some, some question of capital. That is to say that architecture needs, like any product, to, to, re -smart, to repackage itself. Mm. And it seems to me that part of what you've discovered, with which I'm in complete agreement, is that y you have, as <coughs> essentially as the economy has come apart, you also have... Uh, it's not just technologically driven, right? It's, a, it's about who's going to pay for pay. these things. Mm. So you have now uh, a lot of these much smaller projects, cheaper, and they, they are participatory. I was thinking of one in San Francisco called Proxy, mm -hmm. a community along a redeveloped area, I won't take too much time, but uh, where a highway came down, wanted to have something in an empty space because the economy could not support the buildings that were supposed to go there. Went to the city, city put out a RPF and said, you know, come up with something. And an architecture firm there came up with the idea of essentially containers for a series of shops and other things. So it was a kind of pop-up uh, urbanism. Handsome, uh, capitalized, uh, very successful. Um, not terribly architectural. So my question to you is, um, I mean, so what is the role actually of the architect then uh, if, it's not, if you're not going to design... Hmm. Guggenheim, what, how, how does this mean the architects, what is the architect supposed to be doing now? Well, I, I think that the, the architect is uh, uh, probably supposed to be doing more or less the same that it was doing before, which is to formalize these processes into uh, uh, structures, physical structures. But I, and I don't know, I mean, I don't have the, the, the mm, mm, perfect answer to uh, Simply, the, uh, probably the, the relationship with the user, the relationship with the, the client is going to be different. There is not going to be the big patron and the big architect, but uh, a multitude of, uh, of uh, patrons that perhaps, I mean, when you look at uh, Kickstarter and all these uh, devices of crowdsourcing uh, finances, you don't, you're not talking to, uh, uh, to a client. You almost have to invent the project and put it out there to see whether it takes whether whether people engage with the with the project so I, I think that perhaps one of the one of the uh, possibilities is that architect, architects need to become more entrepreneurial and, no. and more capable of uh, identifying opportunities and putting putting there in the in the public realm uh, to see whether people are prepared to finance them I, I always when I was doing the, this experiment I always remember a famous sentence from Buckminster Fuller who once said there will be a time where, when people will vote with their wallets. Yeah. And I think that we are, through this media, we are starting to reach uh, uh, a situation where actually people put their money where, where their uh, beliefs are. And those beliefs are, 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 are going to have to be, maybe the architect is more that kind of person who generates a, a belief that then at attracts uh, uh, capital. Yeah, I mean... Do you find there's a, an, an issue or a problem with the, the, the incompleteness, the temporariness, the, the, the idea that this is, I mean, I in the sense, it embraces the notion that architecture is in fact generally not permanent. 
I mean, do you do you think that's an opportunity for architects or a particular challenge? No, I think I think it is an it is an opportunity, and and you know these things are also going to be permanent. Some of these buildings <laughs> that I was showing from Herzog de Meron, who are in some ways capturing this idea of a, a sort of discreteness of the new um, canon of architecture, or what I would say is a new canon, and the fact that uh, the figure of the building is not is not a pristine, uh, complete figure, but something that is almost made by, by an accretion of cells, by, by an accretion of parts. Yeah, although maybe one way to put it is that if it answers a need, then people will value it. I was thinking of the paper mus uh, church that Shigeru Ban did uh, mm. that was part of the relief effort, and actually that's lasted for well over 10 years now, partly because people like it, so they take care of it. We build all sorts of permanent buildings made out of concrete and steel, and people don't like them. They come down after the, a few the years. The Nothing. I, the Eiffel Tower had standing permission for five years. There you go. Yes. So, it's and you, you just mentioned <coughs> accretion. I just want to one thing which came out of your presentation very clearly to me, which is first of all a sort of modesty about what the profession is about, which is very welcome. I don't think you even showed one of your buildings, which is <laughs> <laughs> quite something. That's a kind but, of but the separate. notion of the, the notion of accretion uh, brings something else, not just a the assemblage, the system, and the combination, but also a sense of time that actually begins to say that right. the incompleteness that we've talked about means that one has to have attention to what happens in 5, 10, 20, 30 years, which on the whole has not been the case. Is that something you've been Yes, I mean, I mean the, the, the impossibility to, or, or the unfinished, the, the, the paradigm of, the, of the, uh, the, the element that grows, that is unfinished, that uh, incorporates a number of, uh, I could have perhaps shown a, a few projects, but uh, I, I thought it was more interesting to uh, simply leave uh, the, uh, the ideas on the table that architects can or have to learn to produce or, or that the new architectural paradigm is, is perhaps about incompleteness. And, and, and it, that incompleteness needs to be physically and visually manifested. Right. That's what. Thank you for that. We need to move on.